The evidence was overwhelming. They'd just seen somebody who'd healed people and he's thrown out all the corrupt and evil people that were in the temple. They've looked at what he's done and they question him. You hear what they say? And Jesus says, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings that has perfected praise. That's a quote from Psalm 8, 8 verse 2. MacArthur says, he, by using this verse in defense of the worship of God that God had ordained out of the mouths of babes on his behalf, he claims the right to receive worship as God. He's the Messiah, and if he wasn't God, he would stop these kids from praising him because the only one that you can praise is God. Anybody else that you praise is blasphemy. If you praise the president, it's blasphemy. You can honor him, but you don't offer him praise like he's God. There's only one God, and he's a jealous God. Luke 19.47 says, He taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. The chief priest would be the upper echelon. The chief of the people would be the... The number two, like the vice president of the, of the organization that's running everything, he's in charge of the operation. And they could not find what they might do for all the people were attentive to him. With compassion, he teaches in the daily in the temple. He's going to be back there two more times. The Son of God dominated the house of God with compassion, teaching daily Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday up until the Last Supper. They hate him. They hate it so much, they try to find a way to destroy him. And it says there in Mark eleven eighteen, and the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. It says there they were very attentive to him in Luke 48, and here in 18 in Mark it says, and were astonished. At his doctrine. Every time he spoke, more people were paying attention to his words and looking at the religious crowd and going, What's wrong with them? This guy's speaking with authority, like he's quoting his own scripture. He never, I'm getting into next week's or two weeks from now, he never quoted any other rabbi. He spoke with authority. They filled the place to hear him compassionately teach the gospel, the way of God, God's way to, lock, to live, and God's way to heaven. He's teaching daily, still offering salvation to these people who are going to turn on him in a couple of days and scream crucify him. All the people were hanging on his words Mark eleven nineteen, and when Eve was come, he went out of the city. And here's the phrase in Matthew twenty one seventeen, and he left them, and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. He left them, indicates his rejection of the religious leaders. After he silences them and their objection to him being praised as God by the children. He's through for the day confronting them and their false religion. They're going to challenge him about his authority to do these things the next day when he shows back up, and he will put them in their place. He's got a question for them that they can't answer. I mean, he just blows them away. They cannot answer his question. They question him. He gives them a question back that shuts them up. No answer. So in summary, when the temple is corrupt, it's because the leaders are corrupt. When the leaders are corrupt, the people are corrupt. When the people are corrupt, the nation is corrupt. If it's bad in the temple, it's bad everywhere in the land. That's what we see throughout the history of Israel. And this is MacArthur's comment in his commentary. And even though it's speaking about back then, this passage speaks to us today. You cannot judge a people by their economic status. You cannot judge a nation by its economics. God doesn't. You cannot judge a nation by its social equity. All lives matter. 
You can't judge a nation by its concern for protection of people from harm. Second Amendment. That's superficial. You judge a nation by its worship. That's how God judges. And folks, we deserve some serious judgment as a nation. You look at the houses of prayer, the houses of worship, and how many of them are false. False prosperity gospels and everything else that's out there. And then you have the ones who have ministers who say it's a job. They don't even believe the scripture. They don't believe the Bible is God's word. That it's not without error. And then you've got half the country wants to go communist, socialist, deny God. You've got these governors shutting down churches, yet opening up bars and strip joints. I mean, it's just crazy what's going on. God judges a nation by how it worships. We ought to be looking not at, say, our own organization over here, but looking at each and every one of our own hearts. Judge my heart, Lord. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse this house of prayer. I'm supposed to be the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. Do it. Do I need to have God cleanse my heart every day, all day long? We need to have our hearts cleansed to give true worship and praise and glory to our Savior so that the world will see him. Like it said in 1 Kings, they see and hear his name and his blessings and they come seeking him. Do we live so that others seek after God. What kind of testimony do we have? Let's pray. Father, we just praise you today for all that you've given us. Thank you for the grace and mercy that you sent Christ to die for our sins, to be the perfect sacrifice. Lord, we pray that you cleanse our hearts today. Help us to be a kind of testimony that would bring honor and glory to you. Help us, Lord, to think of ways that we can tell people how you've blessed us this day, how you've worked in our hearts to guide and direct us. Lord, give us wisdom that we might be your people that bring honor and glory to your name. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.